It is an exceptional sight to witness an African president boldly rebuking the Western world for their intervention in the United Nations. Nevertheless, Burkina Faso's new government has seized the opportunity to lecture the West fearlessly in the United General Assembly. The name of Burkina Faso's new military leader, Ibrahim Traore, is spreading like wildfire across the continent and beyond. He is being hailed for his fearless condemnation of Western and puppet African leaders, and his unwavering courage is winning him widespread support among Africans. A few months ago, Burkina Faso had an opportunity to address the United Nations general debate. During this event, they seized the platform to deliver a lecture to the Western world, particularly France without apology. Although the Burkinabe president, Ibrahim Traore, did not attend the meeting, he sent his minister, Basso Mabazi, the Minister of Civil Service in Burkina Faso, to deliver the speech. In his address, which the president had reviewed before presenting it, the minister stated that it was vital to understand the risks involved and the condescending behavior of the French president, Emmanuel Macron. He accused Macron of often verging on the ridiculous while glorifying a hypothetical condescension towards African people. The minister went on to explain that no African people opposed the French people. There was no anti-French sentiment in Africa. However, African people refused condescension, arrogance, insolence, sufficiency, paternal attitudes, resource looting, and organized crime. According to the minister, these are the real problems that the African people face, and they need to be addressed. The minister also took the opportunity to remind Macron of a historical event. He cited the BBC's broadcast in England on the 14th of June, 1940, when an appeal was launched by Macron's own grandfather, General de Gaulle, to Africa to come and save France from the grip of the Nazis. The minister emphasized that Macron should not forget this historical fact and that it was essential to acknowledge the contributions made by African people in saving France from the Nazis. Basso Mabazi went on to speak about the hidden blood debt owed by France to Mali. He reminded everyone that during the two world wars, 17,000 Malians lost their lives, a debt that France has concealed for far too long. He cited a book by Bakari Kamyan, a professor at the University of Sorbonne in France, which includes a table on page 345 that shows the number of casualties in the wars. The table indicates that over 82,000 soldiers from Mali, Kina Faso, and Nigeria lost their lives, and over 154,000 soldiers in total. It is worth noting that the source of this information is a French book by Henri Leger, entitled Report on the End of the AOF Mission, which was published in 1950. Bazi also referenced a speech made by the French president on November 17, 1986, in response to Captain Sankara, where he acknowledged the exploitation of Africa by France. The French president admitted that for centuries, France had exploited Africa at a human level, stealing their men, women, and children, and using them for labor. He went on to say that he understood the refusal of African countries to be a sacrificed continent, and that it was time for them to develop their own economies based on their own goods and people. He also stated that it was the duty of countries that had abusively used African labor to restore what was taken from them over the last few centuries. Bazzi believes that despite the open looting and pillaging of Africa, there is still a great deal of wealth in the continent, including people and mineral resources. He called out French President Macron for his hypocrisy and state lies in the issue of fighting terrorism, particularly in the Sahel region. Basoma Bazzi raised some interesting points about the situation in the Sahel. He began by highlighting the presence of around 10,000 foreign soldiers in the region, mostly French, American, German, and Italian. These soldiers have access to advanced weapons, flying equipment, and surveillance tools, yet they seem unable to detect the hundreds of terrorists who are causing chaos and destruction in Mali, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, and other countries in the region. Bazi raised some important questions about who is supporting these terrorists, who trains them, provides their weapons and supplies, and feeds them. He suggested that the Westerners' motives for sending their armies to the Sahel are not just about philanthropy, but also about accessing the rich underground resources in the area. Mali, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Mauritania, Algeria, and other countries in the Sahel region 
are incredibly wealthy in terms of natural resources, such as uranium, gold, cobalt, zinc, diamonds, lithium, copper, and more. For example, the water table in this region is the most significant in the world and stretches from Mauritania to Somalia, passing through Mali, Algeria, Libya, and Nigeria. This water table is a vital resource for the people in the region, and its value cannot be overstated. Additionally, in 1957, the newspaper Le Monde reported that there could be six to seven million tons of oil found underground in the Sahara. This discovery could potentially transform the region's economy and lead to significant investment and development. In his lecture, Basoma Bazi made a poignant statement that resonates deeply with many Africans. He pointed out that Western countries often claim to love the people of the Sahel region, yet they send their military and armies to die in the name of democracy, freedom, human rights, and peace. Despite this, Africa, with its massive population of 1.3 billion people, and being the second largest continent in the world in terms of area with 54 states, has no permanent seat in the Security Council. This lack of representation and veto power for such a huge continent with so many people is unjustifiable. Bazi argues that this is a state crime and a crime against the UN. Bazi goes on to criticize the diplomatic lies and gross lies that imperialist powers use to justify their actions in the Sahel region. He reminds us that Africa has a rich history of human rights, with the Kurokan Fuga in Mali in 1236 being the first document to address the issue of human rights in the world. He also mentions that Africa does not like to compare deaths, but it is clear that the Western countries have much smaller populations and land areas in comparison to African countries. Yet these Western countries have been violent towards Africa, raped it, and stolen from it. Bazzi asks what African leaders' share of the responsibility is in all of this. He argues that African leaders have abandoned their identity and their names have disappeared to make way for other names that do not match African realities. He calls for a reconquest of African culture and taking ownership of it. He also emphasizes that homosexuality will not take root in African countries. Bazzi points out that the United States invests $2 billion in weapons which is 20 times the budget of the United Nations invested in nuclear power. In contrast, Africa only receives $34 billion from the IMF and the World Bank, compared to $160 billion invested in the West. He notes the paralysis of the Security Council and the World Trade Organization, increasing tensions due to geostrategic repositioning, and the World Health Organization's domination by Western pharmaceutical companies and trade interests. Bazi argues that the African people, particularly in the Sahel region, will fight tooth and nail for ECOWAS, the African Union, and even the United Nations to become service institutions truly in the service of the world's peoples. This is essential for the profound emancipation of these peoples and true social progress. The lack of sincerity, client-based decisions and variable geometry, crimes, bad governance, looting, Social disorganization and corruption all lead unfailingly to coups, which are just consequences of all the aforementioned. Bazi urges us to look at the root causes of these issues and to eradicate discontinuity in operational maneuvering. He emphasizes that African peoples are profoundly democratic and attached to human dignity, which transcends democracy. What they refuse is the lesser democracy, which is often imposed upon them by Western countries. Please share your valuable feedback on this matter by subscribing, liking, and sharing our content. We would appreciate it if you could also take a moment to provide your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you in advance for your participation.